Prince Andrew, Part 6 King Blocker Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor, continuing to educate you in an entertaining and informative way about narcissism. The Royal Family is providing us with a wealth of material at the moment with regard to understanding narcissism. As I've explained elsewhere, both Andrew and Charles are narcissists, and there is an explosive revelation that apparently... Prince Andrew lobbied the Queen to stop Charles becoming king. The Duke of York plotted with Diana to allow William to accede to the throne ahead of Charles, royal author claims. Angela Levin, of course, is hawking around her new book, Camilla from Outcast to Queen Consort, and as part of that, there's serialised extracts being provided, and they're reported on in other newspapers. As always, I leave it for you to determine the veracity of the material. I provide you with the analysis. Here, an article by Elizabeth Hay and Martin Robinson for the Daily Mail Online focuses on this aspect. Prince Andrew secretly plotted with Princess Diana and his ex-wife Sarah Ferguson, surely Sarah Fergie Ferguson, to try to prevent Charles becoming king and allow Prince William to take the throne with the Duke of York as regent, an explosive new biography claimed today. This would, of course, show a rampant sense of entitlement on the part of Andrew, no emotional empathy whatsoever for his brother, a lack of accountability for his behaviours, and, of course, manipulations in terms of manipulating Charles out of the way and acting in tandem with... Fergie and Diana. Andrew is also alleged to have lobbied the Queen, hoovering, direct assertion of control, and campaigned against the marriage between Charles and Camilla. Interference in relationship, lack of boundary recognition, absence of emotional empathy, sense of entitlement, haughty behaviours. Now King and Queen Consort telling his mother that she was not trustworthy. That was about Camilla. He wasn't telling the Queen that she wasn't trustworthy. Important to be clear about these things. Angela Levin's new book on the life of Camilla, serialised in the Telegraph, claims that the Duke of York was very nasty to her and conspired with Princess Diana to prevent the Queen's eldest son from becoming king. Under Andrew's alleged plan, William would have been lined up for the throne with Charles pushed out, and Andrew made regent residual benefit if the Queen had died before William was 18. Citing a senior insider, Ms Levin writes that the Duke of York plotted with Diana to push Charles aside with the aim of Prince Andrew becoming regent to Prince William. Andrew lobbied very hard with the hope that Charles would not become king when his mother died and that William would wear the crown, she said. This, of course, is an exhibition of Andrew's envy as him being a spare. And, because there's a lack of emotional empathy for his brother and the need to assert control, this manifestation of the envy causes him to actively plot with his own ex-wife and Diana in order to prevent Charles becoming king. It's a brazen move and moreover it wasn't one in keeping with the style of narcissist that he is that he didn't keep quiet either because he lobbied the queen also a senior insider at the palace is said to have told Ms Levin when Diana was alive through her friendship with Andrew's wife Sarah Duchess of York she plotted with Andrew to try to push Prince Charles aside so Prince Andrew could become regent to Prince William, who was then a teenager. They were dark and strange times where paranoia became reality, and this was a worry. His behaviour was very, very negative. Sense of entitlement, malice, and extremely unpleasant to Queen Elizabeth, who disagreed. I was told it was one of the rare occasions he didn't get his way. Now, of course, it's often been reported that Prince Andrew held the status of favourite amongst the children. That may well be right, but even here, the Queen, as a normal, resisted these overtures. She exhibited not only emotional empathy for those affected, namely Charles, but also, of course, 
her chief concern would have been the preservation of the monarchy and the natural order of matters. Returning to the article, Nonetheless, he was apparently very angry, ignited Fury, that he couldn't rule a country in some way. He remained so hostile to Camilla's emergence and acceptance that it's doubtful it has ever been forgiven. Buckingham Palace and representatives for the Duke of York have been contacted for comment. Ms. Levin also wrote about the Duke's hostility to Charles's marriage to Camilla, claiming Andrew was poisonous and very nasty about her to the late Queen Elizabeth. Indirect assertion of control. He wasn't able to go over and say, right, you two fuckers, you're not getting married. Agreed? That's not going to work. He's not going to be able to go over to Camilla and say, look, you old hag, you're not marrying Juggy ears. Got it? And that she would comply with it. Or to go over and grab his brother by said lugs and say to him, now listen, I'm bigger and harder than you and I could twat you in a moment, but I'm going to let you off so long as you don't marry old horseface there. You can well imagine Prince Andrew behaving in such a way because he's so uh, brazen, but his narcissism directed him not to do that because it will have perceived that it would not have been met with success. So instead, his narcissism guides him to assert control indirectly over both Camilla and Charles, non-intimate secondary sources in Andrew's fuel matrix, by causing him to go to mummy and saying, mummy, mummy, they're horrible, they're nasty. Apparently, she... um, she does nasty things in the middle of the night with animals. Therefore, he smears both Camilla and Charles, particularly Camilla, to his mother in the anticipation of causing his mother to act in a particular way and asserting control over Queen Elizabeth directly, but also in the expectation, his subconscious expectation, that she would agree that Camilla isn't a nice person, and thus that would allow him to indirectly assert control over Camilla. The insider said he tried to persuade the Queen to block Charles marrying Camilla by being quite poisonous, mean, unhelpful and very nasty about Camilla. These claims allegedly included that Camilla was insufficiently aristocratic and was untrustworthy. In 1990, when Charles turned 50, a party was thrown, but the Queen and Prince Philip declined in case Camilla was there. Camilla's close friend, Lucia Santa Cruz, said, When Camilla was married to Andrew Parker Bowles, she used to go to Balmoral with him and join the royal family. They got on marvellously well with her. But when the marriage failed and she was with Prince Charles, she was rejected and got all the blame, which was so unfair. The Duke of York and King Charles have reportedly had a strained relationship over the years, not fucking surprising if he's trying to bump him off the throne, which has worsened dramatically since Prince Andrew's ties to paedophile Geoffrey Epstein emerged. When Buckingham Palace announced in January that the prince would be stripped of all his military titles and patronages, wounding, and would defend his sex abuse case against Virginia Jouffre as a private citizen, it was understood the now king had been instrumental in influencing the decision. There, Charles is asserting control over Andrew, and undoubtedly his narcissism would be reminding him with some whispering, Do you remember when he lobbied against you being king? Do you remember when he said that your missus wasn't suitably aristocratic, was untrustworthy? Nail the fucker. Here's your chance. Get your own back against him. And his narcissism will have guided him that way to then in concert with his mother to say, look, he's bringing shame on the family by being a perv. We need to strip him of his military titles. At the time, the article continues, palace sources said the ruthless and swift decision had been widely discussed within the royal family, ferring Andrew's failed bid to persuade a judge to dismiss the civil lawsuit. Prince Charles and his son William were understood to have been instrumental in the move to force him out of being an active member of the royal family. Charles was said to have spoken to his mother, direct assertion of control by hoovering, by telephone to share his thoughts on the decision. An inside source at the palace said at the time it was a ruthless and swift decision which will have been recommended by the Prince of Wales and the Duke of Cambridge and sanctioned by the Queen. It was later reported in February that Charles had told his brother to stay out of sight at official events, further assertion of control over his brother, one which he complied with for reasons that I have explained in the earlier section of Prince Andrew versus Harry's wife. 
Prince Andrew has since reached a settlement with Mr. Euphray in which he did not admit any wrongdoing. Angela Levin has previously published his biographies of the royal family, including Prince Harry in 2018 and on Prince William and Kate in 2015. Yada, yada, plug for the publication. Here, this shows knock-on-knock knock action with the envious, brazen, nasty behaviours of Prince Andrew attempting to stop his brother, if this information is correct, from becoming king and smearing Camilla. Further aspects of the narcissistic dynamic and giving you further insight into what Queen Elizabeth, as a normal, had to put up with and deal with. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening. <laughs>